Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another video on my channel, Hair Licious. If you guys are new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe so that you guys are updated on hair loss and hair transplant topics, as well as updates on current hair loss treatments in the pipelines. Visit my website at hairliciousy.com to purchase our micro needling device, which is scientifically proven to stimulate hair growth, my low level laser therapy cap, DHT blocking shampoo, conditioner and serum, hair growth vitamins, and a few other products to help those who are losing hair. In today's video, I wanted to talk about another somewhat promising hair loss treatment company that is currently in the pipelines in finding a cure for androgenic alopecia. Sometimes, you know, it's difficult to keep track of all the different treatments and companies that are currently undergoing research and clinical trials. But this one was something that I was sort of kind of keeping my eyes on for the past couple of years, but didn't really get a chance to talk about it on my channel. Uh, mainly because I kind of wanted to wait for more in-depth clinical studies and research before diving into this treatment. Anyway, a few months back, we had finally received an update that this treatment was given the green light by the FDA for proceeding with phase two clinical trials. So I figured that it'd be a good time to share with you guys, talk about it, and give you guys some background, as well as my two cents on what I think about the treatment. The biopharmaceutical company that I wanted to talk about is Hope Medicine. They are based out in China and they have developed a human antibody called HMI-115, targeting the pituitary hormone prolactin receptor for the treatment of androgenic alopecia as well as female pattern hair loss. Now, normally men and non-pregnant women have just small traces of prolactin in their blood, but it is an extremely important hormone, especially for pregnant women, as it is responsible for lactation, certain breast tissue development, and milk production. It also plays an essential role in metabolism, uh, regulation of the immune system, angiogenesis. It has important cell cycle related functions as well as its involvement in the regulation of blood clotting through several pathways in males. So studies have shown that sexual problems, you know, low libido, ejaculation problems, sexual dysfunction have been linked to low prolactin levels so, you know, it's obviously a pretty important hormone in the body that needs to be regulated and maintained at proper levels in order to avoid any health issues. So what's so special about the prolactin and preventing hair loss? There was a 2006 study titled human scalp hair follicles are both a target and a source of prolactin, which serves as an autocrine and or paracrine promoter of apoptosis driven hair follicle regression. In this study, it was shown that human skin and normal human scalp hair follicles expressed prolactin and prolactin receptors at the mRNA and protein level. And this is very interesting because as we know, hair cycle and hair follicle structure are highly affected by various hormones. The most common ones um, obviously are the androgens, you know, testosterone, DHT, their poor hormones. These are the key factors in terminal hair growth. They bind to the intracellular androgen receptors in the dermopapilla cells of the hair follicle with the majority of hair follicles requiring the intracellular enzyme 5-alpha reductase to convert testosterone into DHT. Now, apart from androgens, the role of other hormones haven't really been fully investigated, but we know from the study that during the hair follicle transformation from growth, also known as the antigen phase of the hair cycle to apoptosis-driven regression, catagen phase, Prolactin and prolactin receptor immunoreactivity were upregulated. Treatment of organ cultured human scalp hair follicles with a high dose of prolactin had resulted in a significant inhibition of hair shaft elongation and premature catagen development, along with reduced proliferation and increased apoptosis of hair bulb keratinocytes, meaning hair follicles exposed to exogenous prolactin were miniaturizing. This basically showed that prolactin receptors expressed in the hair follicles are functional and that you know human skin as well as human hair follicles are both direct targets and sources of prolactin and that it also acts as an autocrine hair growth modulator with catagen promoting functions. Now there was another study titled Prolactin Delays Hair Regrowth in Mice where researchers aimed to elucidate the influence of prolactin on the timing of hair follicle cycle phases in mice. So in the study, circulating prolactin was pharmacologically manipulated in the period preceding and during the growth of the second generation of hair. A group of mice between the ages of 15 and 39 days old receiving no hormonal treatment was compared with groups of mice whose endogenous pituitary prolactin was suppressed using a drug called bromocryptine mesylate 
Prolactin was administered to groups of bromocryptine treated mice at different ages and three further mice received domperidone to induce a sustained increase in endogenous pituitary prolactin secretion. So you guys can read the study more in detail, which I will link in the description box below. But in a nutshell, mice that had received bromocryptine to suppress endogenous prolactin experienced earlier hair growth at specific age intervals and mice who had received exogenous prolactin on top of the previously administered bromocryptine had a delay in hair regrowth in comparison with mice receiving only bromocryptine. And mice who were treated with domperidone, which increased circulating levels of prolactin, also showed delayed growth in the hair cycle. So here is a chart to better visualize the various treatments administered and the age of hair emergence in the dorsal and axillary region. Uh, mice who had bromocryptine at 15 days had new hair emergence at an earlier age in both body sites. But if bromocryptine did not commence until 22 days of age, the advanced hair regrowth did not occur in the axilla. And then mice treated with bromocryptine at day 15 and then received prolactin at 18, 22, or 26 days of age, lasting for three or 14 days duration, showed that prolactin treatment for three days Commencing at 18 days, abrogated the premature regrowth induced by the earlier bromocryptin treatment and prolactin treatment for longer durations of 14 days plus resulted in delayed hair regrowth. Research demonstrated that prolactin acts directly within the skin and hair follicles to modulate the timing and duration of telogen and that follicles are responsive to prolactin signaling only during some phases of the growth cycle. So fast forward to the latest updates on where Hope Medicine is at. Back in 2019, they signed a licensing agreement with Bayer for the development of HMI-115. They're one of the largest German multinational pharmaceutical companies in the world. So um, this is incredible news and also very optimistic since they have a huge company. Um, they also you know, released aspirin but they are backing them up. So now what's even more exciting is that Hope Medicine also had a preclinical study of HMI-115, which was carried out on stump-tailed macaques and showed that the terminal hair after six months had nearly doubled, um, even in previously bald areas and showed a sustainable impact even after two years post-treatment. Now, stump-tailed macaques also experience hair loss in very similar ways in humans and they share uh, DNA similarities. And these are the same type of monkeys that also went uh, treatments with finasteride, minoxidil, ru 5 a 41 So this is promising, but you know, they eventually have to translate similar results in human clinical trials. And this is what we will be looking for to uh, Hope Medicine as they enter phase two clinical trials in the US. Phase two clinical trials will be a international multi-center randomized double-blinded placebo-controlled study plan to be carried out in the US, Australia, and other countries. I really look forward to an update as they conduct their first patient dose. I really think that it's a promising treatment because you know even though androgens um, are the main culprit when it comes to male pattern hair loss, you know there are still gonna be other downstream effects as we've seen with prolactin and other potentially um, you know useful hormones that can be altered and affected by the entire process. Hopefully it comes with minimal side effects in the long run because prolactin does play an essential role in the body for both men and women. And as I've mentioned earlier in my video, reducing systemic levels of prolactin signaling, which can theoretically increase prolactin levels to a certain degree, can cause various issues. There will be a phase two clinical trial for HMI-115 for treating endometriosis that will be completed beforehand. So we should have a good idea on its human safety profile. Um, it does work in a different mechanism of action compared to finasteride, to tasteride, minoxidil. So hopefully, you know, all goes well and that all is successful. We can add it to a list of our FDA approved hair loss treatments to target hair loss. Like I said, I'm really excited to see what the numbers will look like in terms of hair regrowth in humans. So I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, uh, the only bad thing about this is that it's still a few years out if everything is successful, if they commence to phase three clinical trials and commercialization. But we also have Kintor Pharmaceutical, uh, which is currently in phase three clinical trials for their anti-androgen KX826 pyrolutamide, um, as well as their phase one clinical trials for their androgen uh, receptor degrader. And it really looks like China is pushing really hard to get these hair loss treatments out in the market. But anyway, you guys, that wraps up this video. Uh, let me know in the comments on what you guys think of HMI-115. I will keep you guys posted on this and give you updates on this channel as I come across more information. 
Thanks for watching, guys. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave me some comments below, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Take care.